Hi everyone! In this example, I want to demonstrate how to email the project invoice report together with project expenses that are recorded on a project during the billing period. The expense receipts that we want to send along with the project invoice, such as hotel or taxi payments receipts, are stored in D365FO as document management attachments on the corresponding expense transactions. They will be added to the outgoing email in the process of printing the report to email. Email will have the project invoice as a first and main attachment and several additional attachments with various expense receipts. There are a few more requirements we want to support with this example. We will generate the project invoice report by using the electronic reporting based data source. Then we need to digitally sign the invoice. And finally, we want to use a simple configuration to specify from where to take the additional attachments with the expense receipts. Before we can see how all these requirements can be fulfilled, let's review how the D365FO print management reports are executed. SSRS reports flow through the bottommost lane on this slide. The centric reports flow through the middle lane. And the electronic reporting reports, in this case it will be actually configurable business documents, they flow through the topmost lane. We want the flexible configuration of additional email attachments. We will achieve this by utilizing the .centric email print destination, which offers that feature. We also want to digitally sign the invoice. It will be done during the .centric output document generation. We will use the electronic reporting model and model mapping during the report execution. And finally, it is clear from this architecture that we can support all the listed requirements only if we use the .centric template instead of the electronic reporting format configuration. And it is a good thing because our job will be much easier. If we select the .centric template based on the electronic reporting data source, the .centric will follow the path with orange dotted arrows to execute the related electronic reporting model mapping configuration and will bring the resulting data source into the .centric pipeline. Here we have one time and material project. During the previous month, we registered some transactions on this project. First, we have one hour type journal where the hours for the employees working on this project were registered. Next, we have the expense type journal where the expenses, for example, hotel, taxi, meals, and so on, of these employees are registered. We see some hotel expenses. We register them as separate transactions, and on each of them, we see its attachment. When we added each attachment, we decided if we want to send it with the invoice and applied the appropriate properties. The most obvious way is to use the external internal restriction, but the Centric has introduced the additional fields, such as category, which helps in fine-tuning what will be sent. I have introduced chargeable and non-chargeable expenses category, and I'm using it for these attachments. In the attachment description, I'm using the employee name where needed to better identify the attachment once it is added to the outgoing email. We can quickly preview these attachments. We see one hotel invoice as the first attachment. Let's check Diane's hotel expense. For some reason, we don't want to send it to the client. Perhaps it is over the agreed budget, so we put the non-chargeable expenses category on it. Let's check Terry's expense. It will be chargeable. We also added one transaction that is a travel category, where we have several attachments. The first one is PDF with different taxi expenses. Terry didn't provide a PDF, but an image with all taxi receipts scanned, which is also fine. Then, employees were exchanging some travel plan while preparing for their trip, so we saved it to be easily accessible to everyone, but we don't want to send this attachment. These were the transactions on our project. Let's post them. First the hour journal. And next the expense journal.
Next, we prepare the project invoice proposal. We will pick the transactions related to the previous month. Now we have our proposal and let's quickly review the transactions on it. We got the four hour transactions and also the four expense transactions. If I go through them, I will see that the attachments from the original journal lines were copied to the attachments on the proposal lines. Let's now post the invoice. I won't print because I only want to see the posted transactions and review their attachments. I also want to first preview the report prior to emailing it. The proposal was posted, but the invoice isn't opened. I will find it if I go to the project and then to the related invoice journals. This is the journal that I have just created and here below I see the hour and expense transactions. Above we see the attachments that were copied from the journal transactions to the proposal transactions and finally to the invoice transactions. We will go into the Decentric workspace and here is a tile where we register the reports we want to run through Decentric. I will find the PSA project invoice report and enter its configuration. At the bottom I see a list of all templates I am able to use for this report. We see that they can be based on the SSRS and electronic reporting data source type. For this example I will use the electronic reporting based template. I will set it as a default so that it is also used for previewing. Let's download it to quickly comment on it. This is our CBD replica for project invoice and on the left side we see its live preview so that we know what we can expect when printing through this template. On a report for project invoice we will configure the security for it. We will specify which signature and appearance visualization we want to apply, if any. Right now we don't have anything configured. We first need to go back into the Decentric workspace and configure the certificates we want to use for this company. I have configured only one self-signed certificate that I had locally and I have uploaded it to FO database, but you can also use the Azure Key Vault certificates. Let's work on appearances or visualization. You can have more than one and then decide which of them you will apply to which template design. We saw earlier that on our template design we have a really fully occupied layout with very little space for any signature appearance. We can add the appearance somewhere here or modify the layout to move the header below and make the space for the appearance on only the first page. Let's add one more signature appearance for electronic reporting based project invoice template. I will select that it will be image only, so I need to apply the image. On the right side I see that it is automatically positioned to top right and I can select other position, top right, middle or left or bottom right, middle, left. I want it to be very small, for example only one inch. I will move it a little from the top and I want it on every page. I need to save it in order to see the preview. I hope it will fit my design. I will go back into my setup for the report PSA project invoice, go into the security, add one entry for USSI company from which I am printing the project invoice. I will select the configured certificate and signature appearance. I can quickly check the result based on the configured signature. Before we really send the report I want to quickly preview it. Let's use the original preview. We are happy with the result, so let's go and configure our print destination for emailing. I will go into the print management setup for the project management module. I can do it directly from the Decentric report setup. This menu item will take me directly to the print management module related to the current report if it is a print management report. I have partially configured the Decentric email print destination. Let's quickly view the standard email print destination. It doesn't have a lot to offer. And even the electronic reporting email print destination isn't spectacular. 
Let's see what we got with the Ducentric print destination. First, we select the template. I have set it to be the default Ducentric template. Remember, we marked our electronic reporting based replica to be the default template. We won't use the email templates for this example, but let me just say that they would be very useful if you need to send multilingual emails. In that case, the email body, subject, and sender name and address can be configured for different languages, and the correct combination would be used based on the report runtime language. For the to field, I used the standard email token with the invoice purpose. I could have also used the project email token, which was added by the centric. Here in the subject, I used a bunch of the centric placeholders like invoice, invoice number, for month, and so on. And because I don't really want to send the email right away, but I want to be able to see the result before even sending the email, I have enabled open email before sending. It will allow me to open and review the email message once it is prepared. Attachment is the report itself when added to the outgoing email. We specify its type, PDF, and the name, where I have also used several placeholders, project invoice, invoice number, invoice date, for customer name and customer account. I added also username to BCC, so it will be BCC'd to the user who initiated the printing. We can use nicely structured and formatting email bodies. I put something rather simple, but still with few placeholders and with some basic HTML formatting. I intentionally didn't configure the additional attachments yet, that's something I plan to do now. It is the main purpose of this article, so let us do that together. We need to configure the rules based on which we plan to fetch the document management attachments. We saw that during the process of preparing the attachments, they were copied from the journal lines attachments to the proposal line attachments and finally to the posted invoice transactions attachments. We can point to any of them, but here I will point to the last created attachments, the ones on the invoice journal lines. I can leave the remaining fields empty, which means take all the attachments found on the invoice journal lines. But we saw that there were some attachments we didn't want to send, and for that reason we introduced these two categories, chargeable expenses and non-chargeable expenses. That's why I will here select this category, chargeable expenses. I might go further and filter based on the document description, file type or document type. We saw that some of the documents were file document type and some were images, so let's not limit based on the document type. We can further fine tune by specifying the restriction, so maybe it makes sense to select only the external restriction. Finally, what if I don't have any attachment based on this rule? I can raise an error if the attachment is mandatory for my business process, but in this case I will say continue without warning, as it is the regular situation. I will leave the original description, because we took care to give these attachments some meaningful descriptions while attaching them to the transactions. We save these settings by going out of the print destination. Now I go into my project invoice and print it through print management. Based on that flag open email before sending, the mail was downloaded so that they can open it and inspect it. Let's look at the email and setting side by side. The to field came as a result of email token in the setup. BCC came from the user email placeholder, user who initiated the printing. Subject had these two placeholders, which were resolved as invoice number and month. Further, we have the main attachment, the report itself, and we see that it got the name based on these placeholders, invoice number, invoice date, customer name, customer account. We see that this first attachment is our report. It has the visualization, or appearance, and also has a signature, which we can check too. Next, we got these three attachments. The first from them was the attachment on the first expense transaction. It had the correct category. Other two hotel expenses were internal, that's why 
they were not added. Then on the travel transaction there were four attachments, but only the first two were external with chargeable expenses. That was our email created based on the electronic reporting based centric replica for project invoice with electronic signature and signature appearance applied and with additional attachments from the expense receipts stored in D365FO document management.